there are many productivity tips and self-improvement strategies out there. They come in all shapes and sizes. You could wake up at 5 a.m., use the two-minute rule, take cold showers, work according to the Pomodoro technique, go on a dopamine detox or into monk mode, the list goes on. While trying to live more intentionally and to build habits that will hopefully help me achieve my goals, I've experienced many different outcomes. Some routines come naturally, while other old habits just won't go away. One habit in particular, though, I had no trouble at all introducing into my life, which got me thinking. What's special about this one? On January 1st, I completed day one of the 100 Days of Practice project, which was first initiated by Hilary Hahn, one of the leading violin soloists of our time. In 2017, she came up with the idea of applying the 100 days trend of the visual arts community to her field of expertise, playing and especially practicing the violin. She challenged herself to practice every day for 100 consecutive days and post an excerpt of each one on social media. Hillary just finished season 6 of the project. Over the years it grew bigger and bigger. Now there are already more than 800,000 posts under the hashtag on Instagram alone. Here we go. I felt similarly excited when I read a tweet from her last year announcing another round of the challenge. For most of the 12 years I've been playing the violin, I didn't practice much. It always felt like a chore. I usually took out the instrument about once a week, in good weeks twice and sometimes never. Why I didn't make much progress in that time explains itself. At some point though, I got more and more interested in music and started practicing more and more. When I decided to join the 100 days, I was still far from a daily routine though. What I find interesting and a bit strange is how easy it was for me to introduce such a time-consuming habit into my life from one day to the next. So what made it stand out and which general lessons can be learned here? Especially one detail about the challenge is very clearly defined. Instead of just saying, from now on I'm going to practice every day, there is a time span added for 100 days. When building a new habit, especially a daily one, it is easy to put too much pressure on never missing ones. The problem is that it will happen eventually, one way or the other. You might miss day 101 for some stupid reason and then you beat yourself up about it and feel devastated despite the success of 100 consecutive days. In our example though, day 100 was the finish line. You're theoretically free to go. In my mind though, the limited time frame acts as a kind of launch pad to what comes after. 100 days are enough to make sure that you experience what your new habit means for your everyday life. And you also start to see the results it produces. So no matter the habit you're trying to build, try adding a finish line that is realistic but also challenges you. Choose a length that fits your situation and the habit you're trying to implement. What I found is that when finishing I was already so used to the new daily activity and appreciated it that I didn't want to get rid of it anyway. But the opposite could just as well be true. That you realize that this isn't for you. But in this case the limited time frame helps you as well. Because afterwards you can confidently say that you tried and it didn't work instead of being able to toss in the towel on day two. What is harder to replicate is the community that has built around this project over the years. Now there are thousands of musicians practicing every day sort of together. That was great because it became a communal thing. Even though I'm still standing alone in my room practicing, I no longer feel lonely. In his bestseller book, Atomic Habits, James Clear also dives into the power other people can have on one's habits. And so ultimately, I think the only way to get those things to work together, to really get a habit to stick, 
is you want to join groups where your desired behavior is the normal behavior. Even though he might have thought of more traditional peer groups while writing, I think this applies here as well. In taking part in the challenge, you join others with the same goal. You see others practicing on social media and in the comments, you can chat to those like-minded people. The shared identity begins to reinforce your personal identity. Being a musician is great, but being one within a community of other musicians is even better. When looking for a social environment for your new habit, take this as an example and start looking in unusual places. There most definitely is a group out there with the same goal as you, and I'm sure they will welcome you with open arms. A joker which they won't have and which makes 100 days of practice truly exceptional is Hilary Hahn. She was the first violinist I knew by name and my first CD had her recordings of the Bach concertos on it. Knowing that I'm participating in a project she initiated alongside her is reassuring and motivating. Or as James Clear puts it, we try to copy the behavior of successful people because we desire success ourselves. When this successful person is somebody I've been looking up to for such a long time, this effect becomes even stronger. And now I can even take a look behind the scenes and see her practicing. She didn't even realize how special this part of the project was until later. It occurred to me that, yeah, I don't think I've really been given access to see someone practice. I've heard it through the practice walls in the conservatory. I've heard people practice around me. I've been in the same room when people are warming up. But you don't just sit there and watch how someone practices. The daily videos show her struggling, figuring out details, repeating passages endlessly, having fun, experimenting. In short, doing all the things I do. Just way better. But it still gives me the impression that I can get to that point where she is at some point if I just practice enough. And these 100 days are just the beginning. If you succeed or not is always the result of numerous different things. But implementing a few key techniques will increase the odds significantly. Without the 2 times 100 days, I would be far from where I am today. Not only did I make immense progress within these 100 days, but I also established practicing as something that is part of my identity and part of my day, as is breakfast and dinner. As pianist Dan Tepfer once said, I like to say that if your practicing isn't a practice, you're not practicing. It truly is a practice. It's a daily activity. And the power of practicing comes with that kind of continuity. To all the musicians out there, join us in the next season of the 100 Days of Practice project. And if you are really desperate, just start now. It is an absolute game changer. It shouldn't be underestimated though, because doing a task every day for a third of the year is not easy. But it is worth it in every respect. To everybody else, reflect which skill it is you want to improve upon and turn it into a 100 days project. Maybe you will even find like-minded people who will join you on the journey. Thanks for watching.